Blessed Monday morning sa inyo lahat mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran. Welcome sa ating Monday episode ng God's Word for Today devotional. Basahin ko ang ating talata this morning sa Acts chapter 2, verses 5 to 13 sa Tagalog natin na Biblia. Noon ay may mga naninirahan sa Jerusalem na mga reliyusong hudiyo, buhat sa bawat bansa sa ilalim ng langit. Dahil sa ugong na ito ay nagkatipon ng ang maraming tao at nagkagulo sapagkat narinig nila ang bawat isa na nagsasalita sa kanilang sariling wika. Sila ay nagtaka, namangha at nagsabi, Tingnan ninyo, hindi ba mga taga-Galilea ang lahat ng mga nagsasalitan ito? Paanong narinig natin ng bawat isa sa atin ang ating sariling wikang kinagisnan? Ang mga parto at mga mido, at mga ilameta at mga naninirahan sa Mesopotamia, sa Judea at sa Kapadusya, sa Punto at sa Asia, sa Pridya at Pampilya, sa Ehipto at sa mga lupain ng Libya na sakop ng Sirin, at mga panauhing taga-Roma, mga Hudiyo, at gayon din ang mga naging Hudiyo, mga Kriteo at mga Arab- Arabi, at naririnig nating nagsasalita sa ating mga wika tungkol sa mga makapangyarihang gawa ng Diyos. Silang lahat ay nagtaka at naguluhang sinasabi sa isa't isa, ano ang kaulugan nito? Ngunit ang mga iba'y nandilibak na nagsasabi, sila'y lasing sa bagong alam. When the Holy Spirit descended, it caused a stir and there were others who said that they were filled with new wine. And that's true. The disciples were controlled by a different power. As the Holy Spirit dis- descended and alighted unto the disciples, and they began to speak in tongues, and sa lahat sa mga manakakakita na kagarinig, and uh, ito ay karamihan mga Jewish pilgrims, and they were devout men from the neighbor- neighboring nations as far as Eastern. Um, Europe and Egypt and even part of Asia and Africa. About 900,000 people, close to a million, maybe, during this time. And these devout people were able to, to see and hear sa mga sinasabi ng mga apostoles as they spoke in tongues. They were devout people, and devout means pious and dutiful. This covers religiously observant Jews as well as proselytes in verse 11. Makikita natin yan. And a proselyte is a Gentile who worships the Jewish God in the Jewish way to the point that he agrees to become circumcised. When applied to a Gentile, devout or righteous, may mean he follows Judaism but is not circumcised. So these people were really asking, what does this mean? And some were mocking, oh, they are filled with new wine. Bakit pa they were re- bewildered or they were really surprised when they heard them? Because as they come together, bawat isa sa kanila ay nakarinig ng kanilang sariling wika, their own language. And what they heard was that the disciples were talking about the mighty works of God. And I believe this was the, the message of the gospel, how Jesus has died, whom the Jews crucified. So they were speaking in tongues, and apparently they were speaking in tongues are languages, mga wika, na hindi natutunan previously ng mga disciples. So they spoke in different languages that was, or that were understood by different people. The understanding of what speaking in tongues means is a controversial topic today, di ba? Many think it is a special language that only God can understand. May tinatawag nila na heavenly language. But passages like 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, 
seem to say speaking in tongues is uttering mysteries in the spirit. Pero if we look closely in the context and the meaning of that verse, that passage is clear that when someone is inspired by the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues, they are speaking an established earthly language. 1 Corinthians 14.22 says, Tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. So what does that mean? So tongue speaking is for sharing the gospel and speaking God's truth to people who use that language. So they are for the unbelievers because they need to understand the gospel. So they hear it from their own language. Ang ibig sabihin sa to ibig nating um, at, uh, mapapansin natin dito na it was really a miracle. The multitude that was close to a million comprised of, uh, of people coming from different ethnic uh, or coming from different languages. This They heard it from their own languages. Ang nalista dito about 15 distinct languages. All were amazed and perfect, saying to one another, what does this mean? But the other said, ah, they are filled with new wine. You know, itong sinabi ng mga skeptics and critics na they are filled with new wine, they are both right and wrong at the same time. Firstly, they were wrong. Why? Because according to Peter later, it's yet 9 o'clock in the morning and they're not drinking wine. How can they be physically drunk? On the other hand, they were also right because being drunk with wine is a metaphor or picture of being filled with the Spirit. So, ang pagpapuno ng alak or ang pagkalasing ay larawan is a metaphor or picture of being filled with the Spirit. Sinabi ni Pablo sa Ephesians 5 verse 18, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. So there is a comparison or parallel na compare or nilarawan ni Pablo dito na wag kang magpapuno ng alak where is in excess because the spirit of the wine will control you. Instead, magpapuno ka ng banal na spirito. Be controlled by the spirit. A drunk person who is controlled by the spirit of wine ay magpapakita siya ng kaiba't ibang behavior and attitude. Hindi ba? He is much different as a person than before he was drunk. Magkikita mo na itong tao na to ay tahimik, hindi siya madaldal, pero pag nagkalasing na mag-iba ang ugali, he becomes very talkative, even very courageous and bold because hindi na siya, kundi ang spirito na sa bino ang nag sa kanya. Likewise, the disciples were timid as before they were hiding, they were maybe discouraged. But when the Holy Spirit came, they became bold in their witness for Jesus because the Holy Spirit has controlled their hearts. When in fact, most of them died horrible death. They were willing to die for Christ. Why? Because I believe they were controlled by the Spirit. As recorded, in the Bible, si Panginoon Jesus ay hindi nagsasalita ng ibang lingwahe maliban sa Aramaic. And hindi po siya nagmi-minister outside the borders of Jerusalem, of of uh, Palestine or Israel. Hindi siya nakalabas sa bansa ng Israel. He just went to Galilee, Samaria, and Judah or Jerusalem. Pero, alam natin, sinabi ni Pahinus Christo that his task in this world is to fulfill the Father's will. And, what does this mean? means that he was tasked to expand the kingdom of God. Kaya nga, pagdating niya, sinabi ni John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is at hand because that's his purpose to establish the kingdom of God. Tinuruan tayo na 
you have to pray that thy kingdom come. They can the kingdom come. Sa kanyang pinuturo sa Matthew chapter 6. How this this objective ay maka-accomplish. The key here is in John chapter 14 verse 12 when Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than this will he do because I'm going to the Father. Sinabi niya dito that ang lahat ng manapalataya, manapalataya sa kanya ay He will do work and greater works than he, is, he was doing. What does that mean? He did not mean that there is any greater work than his crucifixion and resurrection. Hindi po yun ang focus. Instead, it's the scope of the ministries. Malawak ang ministry ng mga disciples. As the disciples multiply, they would travel the world and speak to people from all nations. And definitely, this will be greater than Jesus' ministry in Judea, Samaria, and Galilee. So what we can find later as we go on in the book of Acts is that there came a time that they were persecuted and the disciples spread around. They went to Europe and some other parts of the world. And the scope of Christianity has spread. And definitely, this will be greater than Jesus' ministry in Judea and Samaria and Galilee alone because of a greater scope. And, you know, itong paglaganap, pag-spread ng Christianity, ng gospel witness, ay maapublis lamang if we are filled with a new wine. We are filled with the Spirit. So, when God commands us, or Jesus had commanded us or commissioned us to go because we can make disciples into all nations, it's possible. Not by our own strength, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. So, let's allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our hearts. Siya lang po ang ating kapangyarihan we will amount to nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit me today we will seek for his control in order that God can use us as you as we are it's not about us it's about him who is our power so sana sa umaga nito at sa araw na to we Yield ourselves to the control of the Holy Spirit. Manalangin tayo. Thank you, Lord, for today, for your word. Thank you for the reality that we have the Holy Spirit. And help us, Lord, to subscribe to his leadership in our lives. Help us, Lord, that we will be controlled by him so that we'll be able to do what we ought to do. We know we cannot glorify you, Lord, if we are going to do things out of our flesh. And help us to be controlled by the Spirit. Help us to be conscious that apart from His leadership, His enablement, ang aming mga ginagawa is, are just nothing. They are just filthy ones, Lord, before your eyes. So thank you for this reminder today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.